Hello, friends. Welcome to Science Talk. I am your host, Jim Massa. All right. What are we looking at here? Photo of a moose in the woods of New England, in Maine. And uh, this moose is, in, is not doing well. What's going on? First of all, you can see, okay, he looks like some fur here. But look at this is all spot where the fur has fallen off. So you're looking at basically bare patches of skin. You can tell from looking at the moose, it looks a little uh, little ill. Okay. This is a female ghost moose with severe hair loss. Okay. Oh, I guess the one's from New Hampshire. But this is a problem facing moose in New Hampshire and in Maine. What are we talking about? East Moxie Township in Maine, Lee Cantor crouches over a dead moose calf and pulls a clump of hair from a straggly shoulder. I will show you a photo of that later in, in this uh, video segment. A few days earlier, the sickly 10-month-old animal had waded through deep snow to the stand of spruce trees in western Maine and then died. So Cantus uh, says, see how white those hairs are? He's a moose biologist for the state. It's a telltale sign that the calf was becoming a ghost moose, an animal so irritated by ticks that it rubs off most of its dark brown fur, exposing the pale undercoat and bare skin. Because of climate change, because of warming conditions, ticks are now infecting moose by you would not believe now i'm from northern new hampshire so uh you know and i used to go way up into uh the lake umbagog region up into the uh the connecticut lakes over into maine and so forth i've seen the moose uh there of course alaskan moose are bigger that's another topic but yeah i used to encounter moose all the time there and um uh, so this this is kind of you know a little close to home for me because this is where I come from. So with you know so so basically the necks are skinny, the bodies are getting emaciated, big hairless splotches. They look very ill as they walk through the, the forest. Recent years in New England, ghost moose sightings becoming increasingly familiar on the rise. Reason is likely climate change, biologists said, which is ushering shorter warmer winters that are boosting basically enabling the winter ticks to do well and survive better uh throughout but we see something similar here in alaska now the milder winters the spruce uh, bark beetles the larvae are not killed off by the what used to be the severe cold of the interior alaska uh during the winter winters are not so severely cold the spruce bark beetles are surviving and now they're killing the spruce trees so these ticks are now just basically just digging into the moose and latching on. One moose can house 75,000 of those things. And that, of course, you know, sucking them dry, literally increasing mortality. Mostly wiped out in New England by hunting in the 1800s, moose populations being begun rebounding in the late 70s, uh, thanks to a sudden, suddenly abundant food source, new spruce fir forests, that took root following a pest outbreak that wiped out much of the form of a uh, forest among those Dutch elm disease. In the late 1990s, about 7,500 moose living in New Hampshire. By 2013, it dropped to 4,500. In Maine, which is very big, biggest of the New England states, has about 60,000 moose. The densest population in the lower 48th there is a suspected decline, but there's less uh, data to uh, either confirm or indicate otherwise. And a lot of Maine is pretty much wilderness. I mean, first of all, you have the Allagash, which is uh, which runs right through it. Uh, Mount Katahdin, the tallest point in Maine, is uh, found there. Uh, but you get up to way northern Maine, up towards uh, Quebec, yeah, it's wilderness there. 
most of the uh, population of Maine is uh, coastal. Not all, but most. So they're looking at the the the, uh, the ticks, but they're also seeing what other factors may be contributing. Moose are highly susceptible to several kinds of parasites, and likely many factors are, are at play. So there's the offending creature, the tick. Yes. And uh, I do remember that there's another uh, parasite that moose are, are susceptible to that will cause their mortality, and that's a brain worm. It's a worm that gets finds its way into its brain, eats its way through the brain, causing uh, obvious issues, uh, you know, maybe behavioral issues, uh, other physiological nervous issues that are affected depending on which part of the brain is uh, injured and ultimately resulting in death. Interestingly enough, white-tailed deer also get this brain worm, but it appears not to uh, cause them as much grief as it does the moose. That's interesting. But I, I remember, uh, you know, brain worm infestation being a, an issue uh, back in the day when I was there. So uh, this is a scientist performing a, a necropsy from East Moxie Township, Maine, and pulled that, that tick off the moose uh, body. So scientists are, of course, not the only ones concerned. Governmental agencies are worried that the die-off could harm the tourism industry. They're funding a multi-year project to research what's going on with the animal, which apparently you find on the state flag. Wildlife watching, including moose viewing, contributed nearly $800 million to Maine's economy in 2011. Uh, it's the latest figure I have available for this one. Increase of 82% uh, since 2001. Hampshire hunters spent $61 million, while wildlife wa watchers spent $281 million, usually through uh, hunting licenses and other stuff. People come to Maine, they want to eat lobsters, but they want to see moose. So this is a photo of a bunch of ticks engorging themselves. Because they're a you see a tick right there? And that is its abdomen filled with blood look at that there there's the tick you can see its legs there's its head with its pincers buried into the skin and it's so engorged that the abdomen is so distended and there's another one another one and so on you can see, see a whole bunch of them right there a little comb to uh, separate them out So the shorter winters seem to be boosting uh, the tick numbers. Now, usually, uh, you know, in New England, uh, April, you know, is when we start seeing uh, moose, fe uh, the females, the cows, having their calves. But now April's become called the, the death month. So calves are skinny; they're malnourished from the lean winter. The exhausted from carrying the thousand of ticks for five months are most likely to drop dead. Now, this would be calves born from the prior year. It could very well be that if a cow moose is so weakened while gestating that she may abort uh, the fetus or have a stillbirth, or if the calf is born, it may not, it may not survive. So things begin in November when the larval ticks climb on plants. Moose walk by, you know, brushing past, and the ticks then hitch a ride. In the past, at the you know long New England winters that go well into April, so we're talking here in northern New England, the northern stretches of New Hampshire and, and Maine. We're not talking like Massachusetts or Connecticut. <laughs> the ticks would jump off the moose, hit a spring snow, and uh, basically die. And that's as Christine Rines is the moose project leader for New Hampshire Fish and Game. Warmer, shorter winters means those ticks are more likely to land on bare, snowless ground, which lets them survive. 
Oh, since 1970, average uh, annual maximum temperatures in New Hampshire have warmed 0 0.5 to 2.1 degrees Fahrenheit, with the greatest warming occurring during the fall and winter. According to a 2014 report, Maine's warm season defined as when the daily temperature is above freezing. Hey, it, it got above freezing. We're in a warm season. Could be 34 degrees, but it's, a, it's the warm season. Has increased by two weeks from the early 1900s to the 2000s and is expected only to grow. Ryan's was one of the, uh, among the first to notice this uh, uh, tick problem. Two years ago, Ryan's Cantor, a deer and moose project leader for the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife and their colleagues launched a project to collar moose mothers and their calves each spring and study those that uh, die. The winter tick outbreak in 2014 was so bad, more than half of the 22 collared moose calves in New Hampshire died. In Maine, 22 of 30 calves collared that year died, as well as 10 adults, which are usually hardier than the, uh, than the calves. And uh, Maine, in the recent year, 21 of the 35 moose calves collared by scientists are dead. In New Hampshire, all but seven of the 27 moose calves collared are dead. So if you're killing off the calves, you're not gonna have calves growing up to adulthood in later years to reproduce and keep the population going. So far, all but one of the dead moose studied in New Hampshire may have been infested with ticks. Many also suffered from anemia due to blood loss. Well, if you if that's full of blood and you got to say say fifty thousand ticks on you, yeah, you're gonna suffer anemia from having from losing a lot of blood. And uh, here's a uh, a young moose, a young bull, infected with ticks because it's irritating. So you're trying to rub them off, and basically rubbed off most of the fur on its face and neck, these bear patches, I rub them off. The latest casualty is uh, 152, female calf near East Moxie. When she died, her GPS call is sent a signal so they can find it and examine her. And it turns out she was the sixth uh, moose calf to die in four days. So they drove uh, basically an hour out from Bangor to, uh, to where the body was, jump on a snow machine. Okay, in Alaska, we call them snow machines, not snow snowmobiles, snow machines. And then they went to, uh, to uh, gather her. So they basically weighed the animal, 342 pounds, 155 kilos, which is skinny for a calf. And then they harvest a body parts for further testing. So they look at the spleen, pancreas, ovaries, other uh, organs. And, uh, you know, uh, here's an interesting thing. Blueberry-sized ticks crawl on the corpse. Scientists uh, remove abnormally large lymph nodes splotchy lungs and mottled liver looking into uh, cutting open the femur they find what they call raspberry jam which is bright red mucus where there should be healthy white fat we're probably looking into the uh bone marrow six that's taken so much blood the starving body was raiding its bone marrow muscles it didn't even hard for protein so it was eating itself alive from the inside out, in essence. And this is that calf that uh, we're discussing. That's a uh, wee canter, biologist. So then they take the specimens uh, to the University of Maine in Orono. And, uh, and uh, Lickenwalner uh, looks at the lung. It said it should be a consistent pink with various shades of red. 
which is a checkerboard pattern of lungworm, another common parasite in Maine moose that restricts air movement into the lung. So moose, you know, they've got the brainworm, they've got now the, the lungworm, now they've got ticks there. There's a lot of parasites that's nailing them. Uh, Licken Walner has found that up to 80% of the moose calves that she examines in her lab have such abnormal lung tissue. Often she discovers large masses of lungworm in the animal's trachea, like as though, you know, basically trying to exit the body, right, sensing the animal dying. And she finds a, uh, a lungworm next to a dead tick. So we've got winter ticks, we've got lungworms. That's the problem in the essence, and then toss in brainworms. So she thinks that it's not just the ticks, but it's the lungworm and ticks combination that is bringing down the moose. And other stressors, such as poor nutrition, may work together. And that is a reasonable hypothesis. It all affects the, uh, the immunity. So if you're getting sick with something, you're prone to get more sick, and your natural defenses are compromised. So uh, there are probably many factors at work, and climate change is not uh, helping the moose, but climate change is encouraging the growth of another species, white-tailed deer. White-tailed deers and moose compete against each other. White-tailed deers tend to be, at least when I was there, tended to be not where you found moose, so they tend to be a little further south. So the white tails a population of increase in New England due to the warmer winters. They're a smaller animal, so they have a, a higher surface area to volume ratio versus the moose. And their numbers exceed 10 to 13 animals per square mile, which is 2.6 square kilo uh, meters. And in most of New England, okay, you heard me mention earlier, increased evidence of brainworm in moose. Brain. Brain worms kill moose, but not but white tails seem unaffected. And the deer and moose are not going to coexist well. And uh, as you scroll down here, you can see. You know, let's get to the to the caption. Moose can carry tens of thousands of ticks. This uh, is a dead moose, and all these what you see here are ticks. It's like uh, Torn from the skin, see a lesion there. These are all ticks. Now they're reproducing on there as well, so they're just ravaging the hell out of the animals. Very um, troubling this development. In uh, the New Hampshire town of Gorm, now, Gorm is six miles south of Berlin, New Hampshire, where I'm from. So I used to go to my, my a really close friend of mine that comes from Shelburne, which if you go uh, travel east on Route 2 out of Gorm towards Maine, you come to Shelburne. And uh, his, his dad now lives in, uh, in downtown Gorm. But, uh, yep, uh, Gorm is a nice little town, so on. And, ah, yes, on uh, an April evening, University of New Hampshire grad student, Henry Jones, works with Ryan, drove to 13 Mile Woods, a forest known for salt licks, swampy spots, and uh, where moose congregate to lick uh, roads uh, salt. Now, 13 Mile Woods is north of Berlin. And uh, it's, a, it's actually one of my favorite stretches in all of New Hampshire because it's like nothing around. And the, the road is literally right alongside the Androscoggin River. Right. As you're driving north, it's on your right. And uh, this will take you, uh, if you stayed on this road, you can turn off onto Route 26 and so on and go up to Lake Umbagog, where you see a lot of moose, you see ospreys. It's a really beautiful area. Oh, when they come to a salt lick where you expect to see moose, you don't, they're finding white-tailed deer. The moose are dying, the deer are moving in. So then they see a female moose uh, along the river. She goes through the, the currents, goes up the opposite bank. 
and then she uh, moves away into the woods. So the moose in New Hampshire, northern New Hampshire and Maine are getting slammed. They got the tick infestation, they have lung worms, they have brain worms, and their population numbers are drastically uh, decreasing. So when, we co when it comes to climate change, it's not just what we hear about all the time. It's, it's more than the air temperatures have increased and the permafrost is thawing, there's less sea ice. You know, it's affecting the crop. It's more than that. It's things like this that are affecting the animals themselves, opening up to more pathogens. You have heard me make the argument that, you know, as the permafrost thaws, what pathogens could we be unleashing onto our, uh, ourselves that we haven't been in contact with in 30,000, 40,000 years, if ever? And what's that going to do to us? Well, here are some known organisms, and look what it's doing to it's basically an iconic animal of uh, New England, Northern New England. So I wanted to bring this report to you. Um, and, you know, basically, this is just another indication of some in, uh, inadvertent consequences of changing the planet's climate. Thank you for your time. Hey friends, this is Jim reminding you to subscribe and share my videos. Also, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I drop a video in. And I'm also asking to, for you to please support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your continued support.